Canon AE-1 and the Minolta X700, if not the most recommended film SLRs for newbie. Film flips on here again from Film Strip Flips, and uh, today is uh, today's topic is uh, I guess one of the most frequently asked uh, question uh, in YouTube or in Facebook groups on uh, what SLR uh, film camera that we would recommend for someone who's just starting out with film. Um, also, this was actually one of the most uh, frequently asked. Uh, questions that I get from chat or from Facebook Messenger but if you really going to ask me and if you really want to know what I would advise if what film SLR would you choose for someone who's just starting out I would suggest get the film camera or SLR that you can borrow first from a friend or from a relative try it out first because most of the people the reason why they got into film first is they like the look the look or the film look that they see on Instagram or in Facebook to me that's not really how it goes before you go into film photography or if you're going to go film uh, from digital you really have to know the process first right because there's no um, same picture that you can get in film that you can replicate after shooting that after a day uh, there are a lot of factors to consider in order for you to get that same shot what i'm saying is uh, unlike digital you can just edit it on post so you can actually get that same look in film there are a lot of process and some things you need to know before you can consider getting that look there are factors like um, the lens that was used, uh, the emulsion or type of emulsion that you used on that film, uh, the temperature as well, it's one of the factors. Also the atmosphere, uh, that's why when you take a look on some photos that was shot on film in Japan, uh, some of it are muted, parang pastel-like yung color. And then if you look at some photos or pictures that was shot on film in California, you'd notice that some orange tint on the photos it's because of the location as well so a big factor also you need to consider as uh, consider is the atmosphere on the location it all factors in on how it was shot uh, by the way uh, again you know my recommendation is for you to borrow and try film first before you can actually get one don't base your assumptions on some influencers who will tell you that Oh, this camera is actually uh, awesome for you. It's the camera for newbies. It takes awesome shots. It will make you a great photographer. That's not really how it goes with film. Uh, anyway, I would give you some of my uh, top recommendations based on uh, my experience using it, based on how I serviced it. So in a way, this is somewhat uh, a camera technician's point of view also I need to factor in the build quality and the optical quality as well on the lenses if it's going to be very useful for a newbie or for someone who's just starting up with film um, I won't factor in the price because it really depends on how uh, you got that unit in the first place it might be pricey or can be cheap it depends on how you will get that uh, film camera all right so let's jump in to uh, my recommendations for someone who's just uh, starting out with film again uh, i've uh, categorized uh, these cameras uh, based on their uh, build quality uh, their optical quality and also the overall usage for a uh, new or for someone who's just starting out with film photography uh, that uh, goes the same with how i ranked the 
the brand from the most recommended to the least that I could suggest to anyone starting out with film. All right, so let's start with this uh, with this model. It is a well, the brand is a uh, Nikon. So Nikon's uh, cameras are, I would say, uh, well built. You know, from starting from their um, Nikon F, F2, F3, and the Nikomats, uh, and FM and FE series, right? The, the um, uh, camera that I would really uh, recommend uh, for you with the Nikon brand is the FM. That one is really well built. Uh, everything about that camera is metal. I had one before, an FM, an FE, also an F3. Uh, however, I've sold those cameras and got a FM2. To replace those, All right? But the FM, it's re uh, it's it's really a solid built camera. Uh, it's hefty, plus it has a well balanced uh, body when you mount your lens on it. If you don't see any FM for sale, you can actually go for F2 or FM2. Uh, the FM is uh, slightly cheaper than the FM2, uh, but what you get with the FM2 is the uh, upgraded meter that uh, this one has um though there's nothing wrong with the fm i i like that camera as well but i uh, decided to sell my nikon collection and just stick to, uh, with this one since i have a lot of cameras still here uh, on my collection so i just went with this one since this one has the uh honeycomb yeah, that's a uh, honeycomb shutter All right this is not the FM2N series though, uh, this is just the FM2, but it works well. Uh, plus the lens that I have here is somewhat uh, rare. This is the, um, although it's a Series E, uh, it has the purple red coating, which they uh, primarily use with the Nikkor uh, 51.8. So this was actually the first batch that they released as the Series E. Though it's a series E and has plastics on some parts, the lenses that uh, they used here uh, still came from the uh, Nikkor 1.8 uh, uh, lens. The only caveat with this one, sometimes uh, this FM2 hangs when you are not using it or if you neglect to use it for uh, a long time. Uh, sometimes this one catches and it doesn't go off. Uh, what you can do is uh, just to grab a coin all right and in this slot here you can just uh, wiggle it with the coin once you feel that it's uh, released the uh, the lever right let's say halfway you can just go ahead and advance the lever and then take the shot all right sometimes you just need that like this one Once you get that going, it will actually work uh, like a like charm. But whenever it gets really stuck, what you can do is you take out the the bottom plate, and then sometimes it hangs like this. This lever heel uh, lever here catches on the on the advanced. Uh, I think this is advanced timing. Um, what you need to do is just to push this out all right and then you can advance it so you can actually just release the, the mirror and the shutter and then when that happens you can actually just put some lube here so that it can unstuck itself once you have it lubed. all right so that's the fm2 this is actually my top recommend uh, dead uh, brand the nikon fm it really is uh, quality built you know it, it's built like a tank also the uh the lenses that they have the optical rendition that they have here on their uh, nikkor uh lineup uh is actually on par and can really um, go head to head with the contacts and some say also with the leica lenses so it has that um, 
quality that you can actually uh, go head to head with some of the top brands uh, lenses manufacturer or lens manufacturer out there okay next on our lineup we have the Olympus OM1 this model in particular is one of my favorite among the cameras that I will recommend for you and it's not a, a <laughs> secret that I am also an Olympus fanboy I click uh, mainly Olympus and Pentax but the, the thing about this is this is one of my uh, favorite uh, models that I have I liked it so much that before I have five of these five OM1s and now I only have three plus uh, plus an M1 but this one is mostly a collector's piece I don't actually use this or shoot this outside it just stays in the shelf All right but the most um, camera or the one in my collection that I mostly use is this one, the black one. I had the Chrome OM1, first generation after the M1. And then the second uh, Chrome that I have is the OM1N. Then I had the uh, black nickel. And the this one is a black brass. And then also I have the uh, last of the OM1N as well that's actually pretty much mint uh, on my dry box uh, just staying there uh, as a collection all right now why I would recommend this because this one uh, really doesn't need uh, a battery the battery just you just need a battery for the meter so if you have an exter external meter you can use this without the, the battery uh, plus it's its size is actually just really compact uh, if you're a girl uh, film photographer or you're just starting out and you don't want a hefty uh, camera so you can log it outside this one is actually perfect uh, for you if you have a small hands as well you can use this one uh, the reason why I want it is so compact unlike the other SLRs the shutter speed is actually on the body here on the mount All right and then uh, the aperture is actually on, on in front of the lenses plus the lenses that they have it, it, it gives out a nice rendition as well uh, somewhat um, yellowish on this one and I also have uh, another uh, 51.4 that has a purplish tint on it that gives out an, uh, gives out a uh, uh, somewhat a different uh, color tint whenever you um, shot it with that uh, also the lenses are quite small compared to um, some of the uh, uh, SLRs that you'll be using so this is actually compact enough for you to travel around and you know the design on this one is actually just simply it's just simple um, and it's just elegant when you uh, look of when you look on uh, the design of it it's actually just like a an art piece someone could say uh, this is actually just uh, a design uh, on the bygone year as well but most of the time I I am a 35 um, millimeter or I, I normally use 35 millimeter for my focal length uh, I don't really use 50 mm so most of my collection has a, a 35 mm mounted on my cameras uh, the only thing that you need to watch out with uh, the Olympus OM-1 when you ever get one of these uh, is the prism uh, the prism always has this uh, corrosion on the prism this is actually the, the adhesive uh, the adhesive that they used on on the foam but we can or I can service this for you so that actually we can actually just clean that out 
so it won't there you go all right uh, that uh, prism rot what they say but we can actually just clean that out for you it would actually look like this after it was uh, cleaned and you, it, it somewhat um, gives a prism uh, some clarity so you can actually so this prism will be usable for you also one caveat for this is actually this idle gear sometimes that jumps up when it doesn't catch the uh, the gear here you, know, you just have to take that out and then set the timing so that it won't uh, get stuck once you advance the lever all right but pretty much that's the only thing you need to uh to worry about this one but this one are are, are the om ones is uh, easy to service as well if you know if you're handy with uh, with some tools and you can actually pretty much service this um, and maintain this so it will actually work for you for a long time all right let's go to the next all right the third uh, on our lineup uh, it is the Pentax uh, what I have here uh, is the Pentax Spotmatic um, this is probably the most underrated brand among the SLRs nowadays but you know through history uh, Pentax has always been that innovative with the design for one uh, this Spotmatic the reason why it's called Spotmatic was when, when they designed this one they actually planned to have a spot meter on this one uh, however on the mid or halfway they're manufacturing this one the engineers thought it was really difficult to do that's why they ended up with a, a evaluative uh, metering again on this but they're also the ones who uh, started the uh, through the lens metering with the SMC with the new design with the, uh, with the F I think that was with the F so uh, this one or the brand or model that we have the, Spe the Pentax Spotmatic SP is actually robust enough for you to use even if you are a even haven't uh, used a film camera before plus you know, from my first video this is actually easy to service as well in terms of maintenance they, this can actually last a long time if you know how to take care of it plus the lenses the lenses that they uh, released for uh, the the M42 the Takumar lenses I mean those lenses are being used right now by film uh, makers because the, the color rendition that they have it it's actually uh, it gives out somewhat you know like a vintagey color that you can get from uh, from the bygone era as well and those or some of those are actually talk sharp it's actually on par as well with uh, with some of the lenses that compared to now plus the build quality of the lenses is superb all right normally what I use pair this up with the the 35 of course 35 uh, 3.5 small enough uh, to fit and use for everyday use or when you go out All right. also I sometimes use this one this is the 51.4 uh, 8 element version All right on um, this one it's more of a, a cold lens you know it's one of the rare uh, lenses that you can uh, fit for, uh, or use on your m42 cameras but you know we've used this one the color is there but in terms of uh, contrast when you use this on black and white I would still go for the 55 1.8 though I'm not sure if it's just my copy but the contrast on this uh, lens is somewhat short 
All right, so maybe the coding because this one is not coded with the the new one like the SMC. Right, but still, great for your collection if you have one. Also, if you can't get uh, a Spotmatic, you can actually use a Spotmatic F, also an SL. That's actually cheaper. I think for that SL, I saw someone posted with a lens for 4500 yeah, the Spotmatic goes for 5K if you can get um, an SV, but I would stick to the Spotmatic uh, SP or SP2. And also on the uh, Pentax lineup, they released the K series. So I have one here as well. It's the first in the Japan uh, version. So you have four uh, versions of this one, the Japan the Hong Kong, the SE, and then the China made. But if you want to get one that's well built, you know, go for the Japan series. The uh, K series uses the uh, K mount, but if you take that out, I mean, it's just the same as the the Spotmatic. It even has the same chassis, right? Same here. Where if you take that out, you'll still have the same chassis here. It just uh, it only differs on the mount and also on the battery uh, on the battery compartment here. For some reason, they uh, modded this up so that you can take SLR44. Right, but nothing much there. Uh, on the mirror, it's pretty much the same as well. Uh, you just have a link uh, a link here so that it would meter on the K mount lens. This one in particular is somewhat rare i don't know if you can see it but this uh k1000 has a split uh, focus screen on it all right but this one has the split also this one this one has the split focus screen Let's see This was actually given to me by uh, a client, uh, Dar. But after I got that, I fully serviced this one, overhauled it, uh, modded the battery compartment, and got the parts for a split prism from a Pentax Spotmatic F that's uh, really for parts. Uh, the K mount uh, lenses. That you can use here I would suggest getting the, uh, the Pentax M series for me those Pentax M series gives out the better build than the Pentax A also the color is much better on the Pentax M series I what I normally use with this is the 35 to 8 I also have the uh, 51.4 and the uh, 51.7 but if I'd have to choose I choose the 51.7 than the 1.4 this one actually does a better color rendition I have not sure what the coating that was used in this one but this one is better than the 51.4 recently got the 32.8 which has a nice contrast when you use it on black and white but you know when using the color you actually don't you won't know the difference between the three if you can get your hands on because for some reason this became a cold camera and the prices on this one are actually uh, more expensive than the uh, models that came after this uh, the K the KX and the KM are some of the upgrades for this one but those are for some reason those are cheaper than this one so if I could recommend you know just get the uh, KM or the KX instead of this one also if you can get your hands on one of these or if you want a slightly compact K series you can get one of these this is the MX um, sometimes you can get this for 5k with a lens I've just 
checked on this one there is someone posting it for sale for 3k with a lens with a 51 with a 52 or for, with a 50 f2 and according to this and it's in good working condition all right this one's acting up anyway so again that is my uh, recommended cameras for the Pentax series. All right, let's go to the next. All right, the fourth uh, brand that we have is the Canon. And I guess you've seen my reaction whenever this camera gets recommended for someone who's just starting out. If you really ask me, I wouldn't suggest this camera for a newbie. For me, this is just actually a ticking time bomb. It will eventually die out on you um, since this has a lot of issues uh, with how it was constructed. Even the design on the mirror box is not that well thought of. It was actually good when it was, rece uh, it was released in the 80s, but nowadays, you know, parts are getting scarce. I have four of these, no, sorry, I have three of these that's been waiting for a year just to get the uh, electromagnet that they use for the shutter. There are four things that I can think of that can fail with this camera. First off, let's take this out. First off is the tungsten ASA linkage that goes on top of here. As you can see, it's in this one. Uh, it's in pieces. It's really hard to get one like this and nowadays. What you can use is actually a fishing line, a tungsten fishing line as well, or a nylon fishing line for this one to replace it. But you know, some clients they rather wait for the uh, OEM part. And getting that mod and it's getting higher and higher to come by mm -hmm. and as I've said uh, other issue is the electromagnet as you can see here this one's actually again defective and it's not working try to take that out and try to meter it and place it on another A1 that's been working and this one is dead also, you know, a more common problem is a battery door. You know, it's becoming too brittle. I guess more often than not, they will, this will actually break out once you uh, release that. Also, the mirror box. You know that uh, that's quick. There's a quick sound that you can get once uh, the shutter is bouncing because they use a plastic gear here right? It sometimes um, comes up and the only uh, proper way to repair that or service that is actually to take out the whole uh, mirror box and then you know get that gear lubed up also the prism on this one in order for you to clean the prism if it has dirt in it if it, has, if it has dust in it you have to take it all apart you know open up the front panel take out the uh, mirror box lift up the prism that's the only way you can actually clean this up so it is actually hard to service as well you know that's why I charge whenever you send a an AE1 an AE1 program for a cleanup or for a CLA, I normally charge this for repair because I have to take out everything for it to be serviced properly. All right, so you know if you're looking for or you're eyeing for an AE1 as your first uh, camera because some influencer or some Instagram or YouTuber told you otherwise just to get that because that's the best. I would suggest 
uh, getting another one or another uh, model than that one or than this one. Um, I would suggest you getting an FT, an FTB or a TLB instead. Uh, these are better built. This one has a brass and uh, uh, chrome on it, unlike the AE1 that is plastic. You see, this is actually just, uh, it is better built than that one. It's kind of hefty though, but it's well ba it is well balanced, um, especially if you put in a a lens like this a, like this uh, chrome one it's pretty much well balanced plus the optics on this one is uh, better so if you want it to get starter Canon uh, FD or FD camera go for the FT FTB FL no, they have an FL and start with this one you know uh, this will actually last longer than that electronic uh, uh, shutter that you have on the AE1 also you can get one of these I am also a Canon user on digital and this is one of my favorite uh, film SLRs for Canon this is the EF this is uh, somewhat yeah slightly bigger than the um, FT but you know this one is actually built like a tank this, uh, the chassis that they use in this one is the uh, same as they use on the F1 or the or the uh, first generation F1 so you could say this is actually the small or the little brother for the F1, right? Uh, you have uh, two uh, compartments for the battery. This is uh, just for the meter and for the slow shutter. But you actually don't need that since uh, it is working from the bulb mode to one second, right? Alright, let's go to 1000, to 5, oh. Alright, you actually don't need the batteries for it. Well, you only need that if you're going to use that 1 over 30 uh, second um, slow shutter. I'm not sure where you're going to use that anyway. Plus, uh, what I like about this, it's black, <laughs> you know, that's why they call this a black beauty. Plus, let's see. All right, as I said, this is actually uh, like same chassis as the F1, what about that? All right, so it is pretty much well built. Plus, this is the... Uh, the let's see two seconds. This is the only one that they've used uh, a vertical copal uh, shutter on their lineup. See, this is the only one that's out there that they used a uh, vertical copal shutter. So I would go for this one instead of that AE1 or AE1 Pro. Um, it will last you, I think, forever since you don't need uh, batteries on this one. But you know, if you really need to get an FD automatic uh, A series camera from Canon. If you already have the lenses or you have the lens lineup for FTs and you want a lighter uh, setup uh, to get, I would suggest uh, you getting 
the A1. You know, it still suffers the same issues uh, like the door, the electromagnet shutter, uh, but uh, those are the two that you need to worry about. Uh, this one, that's why I would suggest this one is because this one has an aperture priority and shutter priority built in, unlike those two. Also, the exposure, uh, exposure compensation, you have that. So, uh, I think this one has a, yep, this one has a, there you go. Oh, this one doesn't have any batteries in it. Uh, this one has the multi uh, exposure here so that you can take uh, more than two shots. Uh, plus the timer is actually up to 10 seconds, All right? So uh, you can get this one. Um, I would suggest this one rather than the E1 Pro because this is actually better built. Plus it's black again. But what if you're uh, transitioning from digital to uh, to to film and you already have the EOS or the EF lenses you can go uh, using one of these uh, EF mount uh, cameras uh, you can start with the uh, with the Canon EOS 5.5 the EOS uh, 7s also if you can get a kiss those uh, cameras are actually has a better uh, electronics on it uh, same as this one this one is the EOS 3 this is my second EOS 3 I had one before and I sold it so that I can get the uh, EOS 5.5 or 55 and also the 7s I tried uh, using those on our weddings uh, because I was actually a wedding photographer as well so I needed backup for my EOS 7 so I uh, got a EOS 5, 5 for that but I then sold those two because I really like the EOS 3 so after I sold it I just got another EOS 3 which is in better condition than the first one that I have plus this one is well balanced even if it's so big it's uh, it's grip it's just uh, forms on your hand like that even if you have a uh, hefty lens that's mounted in here I normally use my uh, 35 uh, Sigma art whenever I use this and it is like that so even if you have a uh, big or a hefty lens, you can still grip it with just one hand because of that, even with two fingers, all right? It is uh, that well balanced. All right, so if you have uh, already your EOS or EF mount lenses, you can get uh, one of these, uh, the EF uh, mount uh, cameras. By the way, um, if you're on hunt uh, for the uh, FD lenses, like this one, you'd see the SSC badge. Normally, these uh, lenses goes a bit higher than the new. This one is the new FD lenses. It's, it has plastic on it, but don't be misled because this SSC badge was there when they released this coating and even this one doesn't have the SSC ba um, uh, mark on the on the lens they still share uh, the same coating that they have for the SSC made like this so uh, they've just changed the, uh, the housing on this one but the lenses and the coating it's still the same on the new uh, FD lenses lineup that they have. So, you know, wise up, just get the new FD lenses. It's just the same though. All right, let's go to the next. All right, the last among the bunch that I have for you that I would recommend 
is this one and not this one right this has a lot of issues as well well uh, not just but body this is all plastic electronics on this one is also a ticking time bomb you know I already have yeah this one is actually the fifth that I tried to repair problem with that one is it suffers from electronic issues from uh, a dead capacitor to a relay uh, there was actually a, f a fix posted on YouTube just to replace the cap caps for this one it actually takes two capacitors from the battery and up to the posture comp you just need to replace that well easier said than done I tried replacing those cameras capacitors equivalent for those uh, original ones that they have but still doesn't work and according to the repair uh, forum that I've, I'm in one of the uh, Minolta service tech that uh, uh, works on this one it, if it's not the capacitors it's actually the relay which is really hard to come by you need to take out the whole flex board and change everything uh, we'll replace everything with the caps and the uh, relays and everything uh, replace it with a new board in order for you to fix that problem according to them you know if it doesn't work with the caps don't even bother it's not going to work anyway all right so i won't recommend this one because it's really not that well built i would suggest though the srt series uh, from the SRT 101, SRT Super, the 201 and 201B. The only uh, problem with this one, this is well built as well, and their lenses, their lenses are fine. There's only a problem with the front element coating is uh, somewhat soft. If you're not going to use a lens tissue or if you're going to use just a cotton swab it can scratch up the or the front coating on their lenses so you have to put some extra care when you try to clean all the rocker or the minolta rocker lenses also uh the problem with this one is they used a plastic gear here that always gives out. I have Minolta SLRs that are for parts because the gears had already been broken off and it's not really easy to replace. Uh, you'd have to set the timing as well before you could yank that out and replace it. So that's the only downfall for this one i'm not sure why they use the plastic gear on this one but if they could have used a, a better material for this it would be a uh, better uh, camera to recommend also this one the linkage here sometimes gets stuck this is for the aperture meter metering uh, sometimes that gets stuck because it just goes with friction and by a spring here better get this one than the x700 all right those are my recommendations all right so those were the uh, recommended uh, SLRs that I can give out to those who's actually just starting out in film photography uh, you might uh, ask the you know I've left out some of the brands like the Mamiya contacts Yashica uh, those brands are somewhat really uh, not common you might get that but it's not uh, widely available here so the top most or those uh, ones that I've recommend are just uh, the common uh, camera brands and models that you can get here again I could not uh, emphasize more uh, before you can uh, jump into film photography is actually 
know the actual process. Uh, I've mentioned that because uh, recently on the, one of the Facebook uh, page that I've, uh, I'm in, I saw someone actually posted after getting their first uh, point and shoot camera, loaded it with film and then after he finished with the roll, he opened it up and was su surprised that he actually didn't get any photos on the roll. So on that note, I mean, do some research first. I mean, uh, there's a difference between uh, digital and film. And if you use a 35 millimeter roll, it's not like an Instax camera that you can get the actual photos on a roll by just taking that photo, you know. You still have to send that over to a processing lab, have that developed and scanned before you can get the soft copy on those negs. Know the process first. That's the most important thing. Also, um, if you're going to get or you've um, finally want to get that film camera or you've locked into a model that you really want, ask the seller if you can try it out first. Maybe you can suggest a photo walk with him. It's an hour or two. All right. And then after that, you know, do uh, whatever is necessary for you to know if that camera is the one for you because actually uh, the excitement dies out once you get that uh, film camera everyone has that gas or gear acquisition syndrome but the moment they get that, that camera that excitement actually fades out all right again if you find this uh, episode useful hit that like button and we'd like to hear from you. Uh, comment down below what was your first uh, film SLR or if you can suggest a uh, film SLR to someone who's just starting out, please do so. Also, uh, please subscribe. Do subscribe to our channel. We have a lot of topics coming up. Also, a, a film camera giveaway in the next few episodes. Uh, watch out for that as well. Again, Alan here from Filmstrip Flips and you have a good one.